Good day. God bless you. This is the first Friday, Friday the 7th, 2022. First Friday of this glorious new year. And I'm expecting, I'm excited, waiting to see what God is about to do. Thank you for joining us, amen, in our Faith Fact Friday. And we're dealing with tonight again, the Articles of Faith. But I thank you for taking time. Amen. You can share, let everybody know that the uh, Israel and Grace Temple, Safer at Home, online worship, uh, midweek worship, Friday night, Friday night, like Freedom Fact, amen, uh, amen, Faith Fact Friday. And we're glad to be in uh, fellowship one with another. I pray that you've had a safe week. Uh, it's been a lot going on, amen, in the news, a lot going on. Uh, amen, as it relates to the uh, coronavirus and even the flu, uh, amen, and those. But we pray that God will keep you and yours safe, amen. Continue to wear your mask, wash your hands, and if led by the Holy Spirit, certainly uh, don't hesitate to go get your vaccination and your booster. Uh, and certainly let's look after one another that we can continue, uh, amen, to serve God in these last and evil evil days. Amen. Thank you so very much. Listen, we have a lot uh, to pray about it in, our, in article number nine tonight, the purpose, God's purpose for grace. Amen. That's the article number nine is dealing with grace tonight. Uh, so we want you to get your Bibles ready. Uh, we uh, intend to just give you the appetizers, let you go back and meditate on it throughout the week uh, and be fed on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we had our Wednesday word, amen. Every Wednesday, we're gonna have a, a wellness word or a wisdom word. And the word for this week, this Wednesday was patience. Patience, amen. All of us need patience. Patience is a virtue, amen. Patience, uh, tribulation worketh patience. And so I want to encourage anyone who you've been waiting, Lord, how long before we get finished? How long before we come out of this pandemic? How long before things get better? I wanna tell you, just hold, hold what you got, be patient and watch God, watch God do it. He may not come. That's what I heard grandma and, and, and them, grandma and them say, he may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. And so be patient and wait for the sal to see the salvation of the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Preparing also uh, by the way of announcements before we go into our, our prayer and our scriptures for tonight. Um, we're praying for the family of Lee Miller, Amen. Lee Miller. Uh, and this is family, both of uh, Kevin Miller, his brother from Israel Baptist Church and the brother-in-law uh, for Coach Stephen Sims at Grace Temple. I'll be burying Lee on tomorrow. Amen. And the homegoing service. So we're asking that you continue to pray for his family uh, and pray for so many others. Uh, as we know, uh, towards the end of the month, we'll be laying to rest our dear brother, dear cousin, dear friend. Alonzo Robinson, uh, but we know that even in the midst, there's still so many, so many, amen, who are going uh, going home to be with the Lord and those who are uh, still here, praise God. Uh, we're gonna certainly miss those, but we shall indeed for those saints, we're going to see them all again. Even recently this week, not one of our members, but amen, we certainly uh, give our deepest condolence to the family of Sidney Poitier. Uh, amen. We have some amen. He was another one of our uh, figures of uh, highlighted figures when we went through the pandemic. We were pointing out, amen, and identifying certain Black uh, figures, amen, who have made indelible impacts upon um, our culture and upon our uh, race of people. And we are certainly proud and honored for the dignity, amen, and the uh, the way that he carried himself, amen. I never heard of Sidney Poitier in any kind of, of scandal or any kind of, you know, he wouldn't, by the grace of God, we thank God for his life and thank God and we're praying for his family, uh, amen. And now while we're doing that, let's prepare for our scripture reading and then we're gonna go into prayer because that's what we do, amen. Our whole purpose of our worshiping is to put praise in the air, prayer in the air and praise in the atmosphere and to study uh, the word of God, amen. So if you, uh, amen, if you don't mind, if you got your Bible, I want you to turn, amen, turn in your scriptures. St. John, St. John chapter one, 
beginning at verse one, uh, amen. St. John one and one uh, is where we're going to begin our uh, devotional reading and it'll be a part of our Bible uh, discussion tonight on God's purpose of grace. Uh, John chapter one says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Verse 14 says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as the, of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried saying, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me for he was before me. And of his fullness have we received and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The green grass withereth and the flower fades away but the word of God shall stand forever. Amen. Nothing but the grace of God. Uh, there, there are so many, amen. Uh, and we know this is a time that we're trying to streamline and keep it. But if there was a time for a song, this would be a good time for it. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Come on, you know the song. We, Amen. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Uh, that amazing grace. Amen. God, God's unmerited favor. We couldn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. But God thought enough of us to bless us with his grace. And so because of God's mercy and his grace, because of his goodness, and because and we have the opportunity to share. I want to spend this time going into prayer, thinking about God's grace. Amen. There are prayer, prayers have been um, requested for those who are in hospitals, for those who are bereaved. And we still have so many families, amen, who are undergoing uh, grief and sorrow and suffering at the loss of loved ones. Amen. Uh, we told you on Wednesday, Sister Brazier, amen, not only had to bury her husband, but then her sister passed away. And then later after that, soon, shortly after that, her brother passed away. Uh, and so there's a lot of grief and sorrow. So we're praying. And not only that, but those who are searching, those who are waiting and looking, uh, you have some decisions to make over the next several weeks. You have some, some tough uh, uh, solutions to some problems to resolve. But I want to tell you, God is there with you. God is there with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. When it seems like there's no way else to turn, trust me, God is right there with you. So I encourage every saint of God, uh, keep on praying. Keep praying in the, your name, your amen. And we're going to pray one for another, a, that God will answer our prayers. That God will heal our nation. God will deliver us from all of this evil and all of the pandemic and divisive, uh, amen, uh, uh, vitriol uh, spirit that's all across this country. Uh, we, we are praying that those who are homeless might find shelter. Those who are without employment, that want a job, they'll find a job better than what they ever imagined. Amen. For transportation, whatever your needs are, 
I ask in the name of Jesus that he would grant it. Come on, pray with me, pray with me as we ask God, as we ask God. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you now for the privilege of prayer. I thank you for this Friday evening where you have allowed us to touch Father God, even uh, as we're socially distant, but we can still be together by technology, but most importantly, by the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you that, Father God, that while we're on the prayer and we pray on the phone lines and we pray, Father God, on uh, the Zoom line, we pray, Father God, over, over the technologies of these applications, oh gracious master, streaming applications. But in the name of Jesus, we know that we are in touch in connection because of the Holy Ghost. We thank you that wherever you, uh, wherever we are, you are already there. And so, Father God, in each home, I pray for blessings in every hospital room. I pray for healing. Father God, in every courtroom, I pray for your mercy and your justice. Father God, we pray in every room we go into that you be in the room with us. Father God, and if you desire us not to be in the room, close the door, shut it tight. And then Father God, we pray in Jesus name that you'll continue to grant us the peace that passeth all understanding. That even in the midst of the times of uh, sorrow, struggles, things that we can't explain, Help us to trust you and have faith knowing that you will indeed work it for us. I pray now for this lesson tonight. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your love for us. We thank you, Father God, for your word. For if it had not been for the word, your holy scriptures, we would have no idea of what you desired of us. Father God, we would have no idea of what you are like. We thank you that through your word, we can discover your character. We discover your nature. We discover that you love us and you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son. We thank you. Thank you for your word that reminds us. And we thank you, Father God, for your Holy Spirit that teaches it to us, that brings it back to our remembrance. So we pray for your divine uh, intervention through your Holy Ghost tonight. Father God, I pray now for every soldier, for every member, for every believer, for every saint who's called by your name. Bless us now in this season as we get better and come through it. Prepare us for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that the church might be ready when he comes. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I know what prayer can do. Amen. Uh, I still hope you, you have your Bible with you, you get your word. Amen. We just, uh, for the next several moments, we just want to give you uh, a few pointers, a few places that you can kind of rest your hat on. Uh, amen. As it relates to the word of God uh, in this discussion, this topic of this, uh, this wonderful gift that God has given us called grace. So many songs about grace. I told you that. Amen. Your grace and mercy brought me through. Now, is there so many different um, fundamental truths, basic foundational truths uh, that we all believe as Christians, whether it be Baptist or, amen, uh, Pentecostal Church of God and Christ, a Methodist, a, amen, a Catholic. We have different variations, but most times the doctrines Amen. The doctrines as it relates to the truth of the scripture, the teachings of the Bible, they remain the same. Uh, sooner or later, we're going to get into this discussion about the church and denominations and what they mean and why are they so many. Uh, amen. But yet and still the universal church. Amen. It may be a different group, Baptist and Methodist, Church of God and Christ, Church of Christ, Lutheran. Amen. But we all are part of the same pie. It's just different slices. Amen. But the pie, amen, is that of the universal church. And I am grateful to God to be a part of his family. Jesus Christ is the head and we are the body. The, the scripture, even 1 Corinthians chapter 12, says there are many different types of administrations. There are different types, amen, uh, different types of governments, but yet and still it's just one church. Although we may operate differently, we still have the same fundamental primary beliefs that Jesus, amen, was, the, uh, was born of a virgin, the only begotten son of God, born of a virgin, walked on earth 33 years and then was uh, crucified on Calvary's cross for our sins. 
as the foundational lamb slain. Amen. He was slain for our sins, but then he was buried and then he rose again on the third day. These are the foundational principles of every Christian. You can't be a Christian without believing that Jesus was born of a virgin, that he lived, that he was crucified, died, buried, and rose again on the third day. Not only that, but we recognize that he stayed on earth 40 days. And at the end of those 40 days, he went to the right hand of the father where he is now preparing mansions, amen, and interceding on behalf of his believers. He's at the right hand of the father, amen, saying, Lord, you hear that prayer? That's from my son, that's from my son, that's from my daughter, amen. I got them covered, Lord, that's, that's, that's the anointing. Listen, thank God for Jesus, but he didn't leave us by ourselves. While he's in heaven at the right hand of the father preparing mansions, According to John chapter 14, he says, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. If I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself, and there you shall be forever. Jesus is coming back for his church. But in the meantime, we got to watch, fight, and pray. We got to stay diligent to the study of his word and keep loving on one and keep winning souls, evangelizing that others may come running saying, what must I do to be saved? It's a lot of work to do. Matter of fact, more to do in 22, y'all. Amen. We have a lot of assignments by the way of missions and with evangelisms and ministries and community, amen, facilities. We got a lot of things that we have to improve. We have to work. We have to, uh, we have to get the best and do the best for excellence of the name of Jesus Christ. So now of these foundational principles, these beliefs, these doctrines, these truths uh, that every denomination uh, or every belief, particularly of the church, agree with, there are those, there are different numbers, in fact, because they are sometimes written differently. But in the articles of faith that uh, we traditionally uh, quote, we read, we study, one I was taught at Bishop College and what we were shared with and, and BTU growing up and, and other, amen. The articles of faith are a group of statements, foundational biblical statements, amen, that we all agree, we acknowledge as truth about God and God's purpose. First of all, article number one, we just do the catch up because we own number nine today and I'm going to get on number nine, the purpose of grace. But number one, the article of number one is of the scriptures. Article number one, the scriptures. You can't believe nothing else. Amen. What else would you believe? How could you believe it if we did not have the scriptures? And so the article tells us about the scriptures. We believe that the Holy Bible was written by men divinely inspired and is a perfect treasure of heavenly instruction that has God for its author, amen, salvation for its end, and truth without any mixture of error for its matter, uh, that it reveals the principles by which God will judge us, and therefore is and shall remain to the end of the world, the true center of Christian union, and the supreme standard by whom all human conduct, creeds, and opinions shall be tried. That's the scriptures. Amen. That's the word of God, the Bible. You, there are a lot of people that will have a lot of opinions and have a lot of ideas, but we got to weigh all the opinions and all the ideas against what the word of God says. Uh, amen. There are many that are going to come. Amen. In the last days, according to Jesus, many are going to come prophesying false prophecies. Amen. They're going to come. Amen. You won't know this false prophecies if you have not been in the scriptures. You have to know the scriptures and have to understand the word of God to be able to know what's right and what's not right by the way of what people say. Even, even Pastor Howard, I've said it for years to Israel and I've said it to Grace Temple. Don't just take what the pastor says. Just don't take what your, your teacher, your Sunday school teacher or your, amen, or your Bible or who you hear on the radio or on television. Just don't take what they say, their words at, at uh, face value. Go back and study it. Go back and research it. Go back and find out for yourself. Amen. Do the the background search on it. Amen. Go by. Amen. Find out the culture. Get the other supporting text that will help you to understand better. That's what studying the word of God. And that's what Jesus, amen, God told us to do. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly 
dividing the word of truth. Second Timothy 2.15, if we study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, you won't be embarrassed when you're in the word. Amen. Because the truth will speak for itself. Amen. And you'll be rightly divided. So that's our prayer tonight. Uh, amen. We want to pray that God will give us the wisdom of the Holy Spirit that we might rightly divide his word. And if there's anything, oh, Father God, that we might teach that is not correct, Father God, that is not pleasing to you, forgive us and correct us that we might rightly divide your word. We thank you now for this time of study. We thank you for those who are studying with us. We pray now your strength and your blessing reveal to us, illuminate your word, Father God, that we might see you and understand you better and know your will for our lives. We thank you for your scriptures. We thank you for your Bible and now lead us in Jesus name we pray, amen. So article number one is on the scriptures, on the scriptures. Article number two is of the true God, of the true God. And that's that we believe that there is one God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's of the true God. Uh, number three is of the fall of man. What Adam did in the garden when he ate of the forbidden fruit and how he suffered and sin has been in existence ever since then. Number four is after the fall of man, we need to understand the way of salvation the way of salvation. This is where the scripture teaches us how man can be saved, how we can be, uh, amen, uh, brought back into restoration, into right relationship with God, even after the sins of Adam, the fall in the garden. Uh, so number three was the fall of man. Number four was the way of salvation. Amen. Uh, the way of, as far as the way of salvation. Number five is justification. Amen. What Jesus did by grace, are we saved? Amen. He justified us. And I mean, he gave us, amen, forgiveness, gave us a clean slate, just as if we never did it. Amen. Through his forgiveness and through repentance, through his covering, through his blood, that he has justified us. And so justification is number five of the Articles of Faith. Y'all remember? We studied these on Friday nights, every Friday night. Uh, we may have missed one or two, uh, but we're going to continue on Friday nights in the studying of the word of God, the faith facts, articles, the articles of faith. Number six is the freeness of salvation. The scriptures teach us that salvation is free. Whosoever comes to the Lord saying, I want to be saved, you don't have to pay anything. And it's free. It didn't cost, I mean, it doesn't cost us anything, but somebody had to pay for it. It's free to you and I because Jesus paid it all. He paid it all on Calvary with the price of his blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Amen. So now because Jesus already paid it, salvation is free. The freeness of salvation to anyone who simply says, Lord, save me, uh, who has God into your heart. That's number six. And number seven is regeneration. Amen. Regeneration. And we believe that the scriptures teach that in order to be saved, sinners must be regenerated or born again. That word regeneration simply means born again. You have to be changed. And Nicodemus said, how can a man be born again? Does he enter into his mother's womb? Jesus says, no. What's born of the flesh is flesh, but what's born of the spirit is of the spirit. And you must be born again. I want to talk to somebody here today, amen, to understand regeneration is when God's changed us, the old nature, our sin nature, and gives us a nature, amen, that he desires of us for heaven's gain, amen. So when we are blessed by God, amen, to be regenerated or regeneration means that we are born again, and now we began the process of growing to spiritual maturity. Amen. So regeneration is number, uh, was number seven. Freeness, the freeness of salvation, number six. Regeneration was number seven. And number eight, we did, uh, amen, before the end of the year, repentance and faith. Amen. Repentance and faith. Uh, and we understand that these two go together. Amen. Repentance, because in order to be saved, amen, you got to believe, amen, uh, that God can and God will forgive us of sins. Uh, and so repentance is when we come before God and say, Lord, I admit, I, I accept, I acknowledge, I confess before you my wrongdoings, my wrong actions, my wrong thinking. Amen. And God forgives us. Amen. First John says, amen. If you confess your sins, he is faithful 
and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Ah, the repentance and faith. And we know faith, amen, is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So all of these, amen, the previous eight articles leads us up to where we are now. Article number nine, amen, God's purpose of grace. God's purpose of grace. Let me read it to you, and then we'll go into the scriptorial teachings uh, for you to meditate on, uh, and then we'll we'll be uh, free to pray, amen, and, and move and let the Holy Spirit have his way, uh, even as we um, come through this uh, season, this season in our society. All right, God's purpose, excuse me, Number, number nine, article number nine, God's purpose of grace. We believe the scriptures teach that election is the eternal purpose of God, according to which he graciously regenerates, sanctifies, and saves sinners. That being perfectly consistent with the free agency of man, it comprehends all the means and connections with the end, that it is a most glorious display of God's sovereign goodness. Being infinitely free, wise, holy, and unchangeable, that it utterly excludes boasting and promotes humility, love, prayer, praise, trust in God, and active imitation of his free mercy, that it encourages us the use of means in the highest degree, that it may be ascertained by its effect in all who truly believe the gospel, that it is the foundation of Christian assurance, and that to ascertain it with regard to ourselves demands and deserves the utmost diligence. God's purpose of grace. Let's get into it tonight. Yes, uh, and even going uh, as we get into it, going back to our original scripture that we uh, uh, we opened up tonight, St. John chapter 1, we read to you verses 1 through 16, but I just want to look at 14, 14 and 16. I want to look at it from also uh, different versions of the Bible, the amplified version. Uh, and we understand that John chapter one is the chapter that talks about the nature of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Amen. It, we understand the same was in the beginning. Uh, and we understand that, uh, amen, through John uh, chapter one, amen, that all things that we have because of him, verse three says, it, it, everything that was made was made by him. It was not anything that was made. Uh, that he didn't do it. Amen. Throughout this entire first chapter, John talks about um, the coming of John the Baptist, who was, and then Jesus who came later. Uh, but what I really enjoy about it is the, the wonderful reminder about the word. We know in the beginning was the word and the word was God. The word simply is the spoken Amen. Uh, amen. This is a capital W, the living word. Amen. Spoken by God, the father. He, God, the son. Amen. God, the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. The word, Jesus Christ himself was around in the beginning. He just had not been born in human flesh until God, amen, through the Holy Spirit. Uh, amen. And the Virgin Mary, when God produced his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life his son is also the lamb of god the lamb of god is also the word of god amen the word of god uh, we thank god so in the beginning was the word but now we find out in verse number 14 verse number 14 is as the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and if you didn't know, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the father, listen to this, full of grace and truth. Amen. The word who was Jesus Christ became flesh and lived among us. And we actually saw his glory as belong as belongs to the one and only begotten son of the father, the son who is truly unique, the only one of his kind, who is 
full of grace and truth, absolutely free of deception. That's what the Amplified Version says about it. But let's keep going on. Verse 15 says, John testified repeatedly. I'm reading for the Amplified Version. John testified repeatedly about him who has cried out, testifying officially for the record with validity and relevance. This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me, who is high, who has a higher rank than I and has priority over me, for he existed before me. For out of his fullness, the superabundance of his grace and truth, we have all received grace upon grace, spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. I want to tell you, God so gave us his grace. Matter of fact, because of Jesus and the Holy Ghost, and because God gave us double grace, amen. Great grace upon grace, amen. Gift heaped upon gift. So not only, and this makes sense, because God was so gracious, and even in the Old Testament with the law, amen. But because of the law where it failed, God gave us even more. He gave us the gift of the Holy Ghost. He gave us grace because of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, let's get into it because this is the other scripture that I want you to look into. We have quite a few of them tonight. I just want you to write them down and go back and read over them and study them so that you can. Hey, man. Um, but let's take a look at this grace. Grace by by its definition, I love the way I, even, I heard preachers uh, use it even as an acronym, grace, G-R-A-C-E. Amen. God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace. That's what we receive. We receive God's riches at Christ's expense. So grace is when God blesses us with what we don't deserve. It's unmerited. We didn't merit it. We didn't do anything to really deserve it. In fact, after we've done enough that would, uh, amen, that would disinherit us, that would not allow us to even be a uh, partaker of God's grace and of, God, of his goodness and his favor. But because he looks beyond all our faults, that's called grace, God, grace, God's unmerited favor. In fact, define the word grace, um, grace derives from the, the Greek word, another Greek word, charis. Charis, from which we get the word like charismatic, uh, charisma, amen, grace, uh, derives from that Greek word. And um, it signifies, charis signifies favor, goodwill, and loving kindness, especially as granted by a superior to an inferior. In the New Testament, in the New Testament, grace is mentioned 156 times, and it takes on a special redemptive sense in which God makes available his favor on behalf of sinners who actually do not deserve it. This is a tremendous emphasis in the New Testament upon the fact that human salvation is a result of heaven's grace. This beautiful truth should never be minimized. At the same time, it must not be perverted. Amen. Uh, let's move to another scripture real quickly, uh, because I got so many. Uh, tonight also is Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Amen. And we're going to begin at verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, let's see. Let's read this from the New International Version, NIV. Um, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were nature. We were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love, uh, because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and sealed us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace 
expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Verse number eight says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's verses one through 10 of Ephesians chapter two. Uh, amen. And again, it's another reminder about the grace of God and how God loves us so much and how God, uh, amen, that in the ages to come, he showed us exceeding, amen, exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Uh, amen. That was Ephesians chapter two. Uh, and there are still, amen, James chapter four is another. Uh, and so in James chapter four, uh, there are some other wonderful, powerful teachings uh, that remind us about the good God. Listen, beginning at verse one, James chapter four, and there are so many scriptures. I just want you guys to take them. Remember John chapter one, verses 14 and 16, Ephesians chapter two, and now we're in James chapter four. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not even from your lust that you war in your members? Ye lust and you have not, ye kill and you desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet ye have not, because you ask not. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that your friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will dry nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of our Lord and he shall lift you up. Amen. Uh, it's important to understand even by this grace comes is as a result of our humility. God gives grace to the humble. He exalts the humble. Uh, and so we're even talking about how to access God's grace. We know God's grace is his unmerited favor, his love that he gives us, even though we don't deserve it. He allows us uh, the opportunity uh, to be in favor. Uh, amen. Because of his grace. It, it's by, by the grace of God through faith. Lest any man should boast. We can't be bragging on anything we have because what we have is because of the grace of God. Where I'm from, where I'm from, he brought me, B-R-O-U-G-H-T. He brought me, amen. What I owe and what, amen, what it cost, amen. He bought me, B-R-B-O. You come on, y'all. Ain't it good to be bought and brought? Amen. I thank God. Uh, I, get, I hear you. I hear you. I thank God that he loves us enough that he saves us. So James chapter four is another reminder. Amen. About how, amen. If we submit ourselves unto God, how God will give us grace. In fact, he give us more grace. We give us more grace uh, for the humility. So as we access, accessing the grace of God, amen, is important. Amen. And the, uh, the next scripture I want you to examine with me uh, is Romans chapter five. Uh, and I thank God for his, his anointing and the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter five, verses one and two. Amen. And, and we've discussed these on many occasions, this particular passage of scripture, but then we also want to see where in how grace is affected. Amen. We thank God, God's purpose of grace. Listen, therefore, Romans chapter five, beginning at verse one, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing 
that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which was given unto us. Uh, amen. So we know not only we justified by faith, uh, amen, and we thank God that we have now access by faith into this grace, uh, this unmerited favor that God, we have access because of our faith in God and believing in God. But grace uh, is so amazing again. Uh, and God's purpose for grace is because mankind, what the law could not do, only Jesus Christ could. Amen. Uh, amen. God's favor. God loved us so much that even, amen, when we were coming uh, and, and, and trying to sacrifice goats and lambs and bulls and turtle doves and pigeons, amen, that we would have to continuously do that. Uh, but yet and still, what Jesus did on Calvary's cross, amen, when he paid the ultimate, amen, the permanent uh, penalty for sin, he died, amen, on Calvary's cross, shed his blood. So there's no more need no more need of shedding the blood of lambs and bulls because Jesus was the lamb, is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And because of his obedience to God and because of what he did, now we have grace, this wonderful grace by which we are allowed, amen, uh, we are allowed to have access to the Father. So thank y'all so very much. We'll be able to talk more about it. Amen. There's so many sermons and songs and ministries and others about the purpose of grace. But I want you to realize that God's grace is sufficient. That's a whole nother passage of scripture. I don't even want to talk about that. But what you're going through, amen. Uh, if I had time, I'll preach the sermon. I'll go back over talking about, amen, how the apostle Paul had a thorn in his flesh. He was dealing with it, serving God, teaching and preaching and writing letters and doing, but yet still he had his own affliction and he asked God to remove that affliction. I'm going to close right here, y'all. There are some things that you're going through right now. You're asking God to remove it. Amen. It may be, uh, amen, part of this coronavirus, Lord, move it. It may be. Amen. It might be a situation where it's a relationship or something that you're into that you're really trying to find a way to get out. You're saying, Lord, move me from this situation. Amen. But I want to tell you today that whatever you are experiencing, whatever you are going through, whatever difficult moments, God's grace is sufficient. Paul says, amen, Lord, he, he said, I prayed three times. Hey, look, Lord, move this thing. Lord, take this thorn from my flesh. We don't even know what thorn was. We don't know if it was an addiction. We don't know if it was an illness. We don't know if it was relationship. We don't know exactly what the thorn was, but we do know that Paul prayed uh, multiple times over and over again. Have you ever prayed multiple times? Lord, move this thing, move this thing. Lord, get rid of this. Lord, I'm tired of that. Lord, Lord, fix this situation. Amen. And then God didn't do anything, but yet and still you heard a voice saying, my grace is sufficient. That's what God told Paul. And that's what God through the word of God is telling you and me today that whatever struggle, whatever you're striving with because of his grace, his unmerited favor, amen, is sufficient to assist us in the journey, to assist us in the assignment that God has given us, amen. We have to stay humble, amen, continue to thank God, continue to lift up the name of Jesus, and I assure you, when we do that, when we continue to go before his presence, and we thank him for his grace and his mercy, uh, amen. The grace of God, God's riches at Christ's expense. That's grace. And we know, amen, that uh, through the grace of God, through the grace of God, we are saved. And then we have access where we can get to God. And that's all because of his mercy and his grace. Love you. And we thank God for you tonight. Um, we just gave you those scriptures. Don't forget John chapter one, go back and read it. Uh, Ephesians chapter two, James chapter four and Romans chapter five. Amen. And I assure you that if you pray over it while you're reading it, the Holy Spirit is going to give you, amen, a deep revelation. Uh, amen. That's going to help you with what you're going through right now. Uh, his grace will make a difference. Uh, so those of you, thank you for joining us tonight, Friday night, uh, as we, um, the first Friday in the, in the year, 2022, and then our articles of faith at faith fact number nine. 
faith fact number nine that we're on tonight and God's purpose for grace. Join us on Sunday morning, uh, Sunday morning, amen, at 845 for morning worship at Grace Temple. Uh, amen. And then we'll be on Grace Temple Live also. And then also at 1130, we'll be on uh, amen on the Israel page live. And we're praying for those of you in Sunday school. I hope you still got your Sunday school books. You've been studying Sunday school because we really thank God for his word. The Bible again says study to show thyself approved. Amen. He didn't say get dressed up and always show up and pay a lot of money. Amen. But he says study to show thyself approved. Wonderful to have gifts and talents to sing praises and to preach and all that. But the Bible says study to show yourself approved. So thank you for studying with us tonight. Uh, thank you for taking this moment. Uh, and I pray that you'll continue to be blessed. If you were with us tonight and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now you understand about grace and how God's grace is sufficient for you. And you're saying, what must I do to be saved? It's real simple. If you believe, amen, that Jesus is the son of God, that he died Amen. He was crucified. He was buried, but he rose again in three days. You believe that and you confess that. Confess it with your mouth and believe it with your heart. You shall be saved. So I encourage you. All you got to do is just pray the sinner's prayer. Say, Father God, I know I am a sinner and I want to be saved. Come into my life and save my soul in Jesus name. And if you prayed that prayer, I'm here to tell you, saints, uh, amen. God will save you. He never, he never lies and he never breaks a promise. So if you called on him right now, what we need you to do now is to let us know that you got saved. Let us know that you made that sinner's prayer. You asked God to save your soul. And the next thing is to be baptized and to be a discipled, discipled by the word of God, study to show thyself approved, to be a better Christian. We love you. And I thank God for you. And for those of you who are saved, members of grace, members of Israel, uh, all church family, all believers who are members, wherever your church membership is, don't forget to sow your seeds and support that ministry. Amen. Your church needs you. Amen. Your church needs you. Your pastor needs you. Uh, we ask that even though sometimes we're coming to the numbers, we have canceled all of our uh, uh, in-person meetings with the exception of Sunday morning worship and Sunday school. Sunday school and Sunday morning worship are the only things that we are, uh, we're doing everything else be on the telephone or on Zoom or on uh, some uh, mean WebEx or one of our social apps, but we are wanna remain safe and we are gonna come out and we're gonna be socially distant. Wear your mask when you come to church Sunday, uh, amen. And we're gonna sit socially distant so that we'll be comfortable and stay safe. We don't know how long we're gonna be doing it this way, whether we'll be going up or going backwards, but our hand is in God's hands and we're trusting him. And we're trusting for uh, even the science, amen, because I believe God gave us the science. So pray, pray mightily and particularly continue to wash, uh, amen, sanitize, keep yourself masked up and let's stay safe for the cause of Christ. So thank you for your givings. Thank you for your prayings. Thank you for your, your love and your, your strength. Now bless you even as you're at home. May the spirit of God be with you. May he guide you in all of your endeavors. May he comfort you uh, in all of your distresses. Remember, hey, his grace is sufficient for all that you need. So we thank God for this night, Friday night, the first Friday in 2022. And we look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning or you seeing us, or we seeing each other on the stream. We love you. May God keep you. And don't forget, uh, thank you. Those of you, thank you for your gifts for the hygiene kits. It's not too late if you want to donate some money or, you know, soap, uh, whatever we're putting inside the hygiene kits for youth and uh, amen students uh, at particular high schools and uh, middle schools, uh, even elementary schools that may need hygiene products to help them at home. God bless you. We love you and be encouraged, saints. Uh, trouble don't last always.
All right now. Come on, if you know trouble on that song, lady, come on. Get up at your feet. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Cause trouble don't last always. We such a sovereign God. Come on, fellas, let's tell them. I'm so glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lady, trouble don't last always. Say, I'm so glad. Ooh. Say, trouble don't last always. Come on, one more time. Say, I'm Say this thing. 